Welcome back to the channel guys. My name is Chris Gaysford and in this video we're going to go back into Home Assistant to set up our Zigbee USB stick. Right here I have the Con B2 as the Zigbee stick I'm going to be using for this video. Um, so if that's what you're interested in learning how to do, go ahead and stick around. So in my last Home Assistant video, um, if you haven't seen it, you could click up here. Um, but you can see that I've kind of changed my Home Assistant kind of setup. Not too much, nothing that really changes anything. I just put my Raspberry Pi into a case um, and then I put my Z-Wave stick from AO Aerotech um, into a USB extender. Um, and I also have a second USB extender that I'm going to be plugging the Convi 2 into. Um, well, the reason I did this is just so I could separate them a little bit, um, just to make sure they don't have any interference or anything like that. Um, while it shouldn't be much of a problem, it's just something to keep in mind um, long term if you are noticing some weirdness. On top of that, it kind of makes things easier to plug into the Raspberry Pi. So if I wanted to plug in something else, I have the room to do so. Um, just because this Z-Wave stick is a little bit fat. Um, so let's go ahead and let's just jump right into things. I'm going to go ahead and take the Con V2 and plug it right into the USB stick here, or extender. And make sure I have it the right direction. Okay, and we'll just plug it in like that. Um, there's no lights or anything that show up on the Con V2, so once you have it plugged in, you just have to know it's plugged in to make sure it's working. Um, it doesn't give you any status lights or anything like that. So now that we have that plugged in, um, let's go ahead and jump over to our Home Assistant. Um, and right now, as you can see, I have the Decon Z add-on right here. Um, I mentioned this add-on in the past and said we were going to go ahead and install it. Um, this is the add-on that specifically said that it worked with the Convi 2. Um, after spending a few hours playing around with it, I have come to the conclusion that it does work, um, but it's not the most straightforward route to go when you're trying to do Zigbee connections. On top of that, um, I didn't seem to have all the functionality I was expecting to have, such as button presses and stuff like that when it came to my SmartThings button. So that's just something to keep in mind if you are going to go this route. But the better way to do it is, seems to be the Zigbee integration. So if you have this installed, go ahead and uninstall it. We're not going to be using it in this video. Um, we're going to hop over to our configuration tab and go over to integrations. Okay, and then here on this page, we're going to add an integration down here in the bottom right hand corner. And this list is going to be quite long, um, but there is a nice search feature. So we're just going to go ahead and type Zigbee and you can see the Zigbee home automation right here. We're going to go ahead and press add and then it's going to go ahead and install it. And then it's going to ask us the serial device path for our Convi 2. Um, this already populates a list for us. Um, and I'm not sure which our device is. so. We're gonna go ahead and close out of that. We're gonna hop over to our supervisor tab here. And we're gonna go over to system, host system, and we're gonna click these three dots and we're gonna go to hardware. And on the hardware pop-up, we can see we have this path here. And this is our Convi 2. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this path here. Um, but unless it won't let us add this path, just for reference, it is the TTY ACM1. So we'll keep that in mind and make sure I do have that copied. Go back over to our configuration integrations here. Go back to add an integration and we'll go by ahead and search for that Zigbee again. And select device path. We'll say enter manually. And it looks like we're going to have to press submit there. And we're going to select the device type of protocol we're going to be using. This will be the Decon Z protocol with the Con B2. We'll go ahead and press submit. And then it's asking for that device path now. So we'll go ahead and paste that in there. And hit, oops, and it failed to connect. 
Okay, so it's not seeing it there. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go into our configuration. Let's go over to server controls. And not seeing anything here that would prevent us. Configuration is valid. So with the Combi 2 plugged in, um, I didn't have this issue in my testing, but I'm gonna go ahead and restart Home Assistant um, and see if that makes everything a little bit happier without unplugging the Combi 2. Um, it might be just a little bit upset because I have added it, then removed the device from Home Assistant so I could go ahead and make this video. Um, so I'm assuming you're not gonna have these problems when you go to actually add it yourself. All right, so we got the message that Home Assistant has started. We're gonna go ahead and just refresh the page, make sure everything is happy here. And I'm gonna go ahead and close out a few of my tabs here. Um, so as you can see, I was doing some research. Um, the, this Foscon app is part of that other um, Decon Z integration that I was showing you guys earlier, but we're not gonna be using that here. And we'll go ahead and we can close out the rest of these as well. But now that we've restarted Home Assistant, let's go back into our configuration integrations. And let's go ahead and try to add that Zigbee integration again. Oh, there we go. And now it is seeing that con B2. So it looks like restarting it did help out and we can see it's that TTY ACM1. So we're gonna select that and press submit. And then like before, it's gonna ask us the protocol we're gonna to wanna to be using for this. Oh, it looks like it was able to detect it by itself. It's the Decon Z, and that's exactly what we're looking for. Um, you can assign it to an area if you would like. Um, I don't have any need to specify the area for this device specifically, so I'm just gonna leave it blank. And go ahead and press finish. And now we, we have the Zigbee home automation integration here. And so if we go ahead and press configure here, it takes us to this Zigbee network where we have devices and entities. Um, if you click devices, it's gonna take you to our device page, which we have our Zigbee coordinator. And to add a new device to this, it's fairly straightforward. You just go to that Zigbee coordinator and you now have this option to add devices via this device. Um, you can see this is the Zigbee coordinator. It has all of our information here. And so that's where we're gonna go ahead and add a device to this. So in this video, we're gonna be adding this Smart Things button here. Um, you make sure it's not connected to the Smart Things hub. Um, this device specifically has a little pinhole on the back of it here, which allows you to reset it if you stick in something like a SIM card removal tool for a few seconds, um, it should reset it and allow you to add it to a new network. Um, I'm pretty sure I've already done that. So we're gonna go ahead and press add device via this device here. And now it's gonna be searching for that device. And I'm just gonna go ahead and press this button down and see if we can get it to go into pairing mode. Um, it doesn't look like it's lighting up at all. So I am gonna use this little SIM card removal tool, stick it in the back. And there we go, now it's flashing the green and red. And if we keep an eye out on both of these, um, I'm assuming the lights on this are gonna disappear before we see anything on the Zigbee screen. And let's see, still flashing it looks like. And we haven't seen anything on our Zigbee screen. Okay, oh, it's going a solid green, which I think means that it has connected and now the light has turned off on our SmartThings button. We'll go ahead and we'll set that over there. And if we keep a look on the ZHA Zigbee devices screen here, um, it says devices will show up here once discovered. Um, in my testing, you 
can leave this page and come back to it, but the device seemed to work consistently better as I just stayed on the screen and waited for it to actually show me the button was connected. Um, probably just because I needed to pull in some more metadata for that device. So we'll go ahead and we'll give that a, oh, there we go. It shows that the button has been added. Um, I'm not sure where I'm going to be placing the button yet. So I'm going to keep the area blank and we'll just give it, um, we'll just call it first button just because I do have a few of them in my network. And just so I know this is the first one I've added. And there we go. That's all we need to do to get this added in. And if we go back into, if we just click this back button, it's gonna take us back to our Zigbee coordinator where we could go up to our devices again. And now we have our first button device here. We can see it's a Zigbee device. The battery's at 100%. And we can see it's on, the power is 100%. We can see the temperature. And what's kind of confusing is you don't see anywhere where you can see the button press. And this was something I fought with at first because I didn't think it had successfully paired to my home assistant. Because if I sit here and I press the button, nothing seems to be happening. And that's fine, but it's because I haven't set up any automations for the button. so. Unlike other home assistant configurations um, and other devices you pair to home assistant, like let's say the lock is a good example because you have the option to lock it and unlock it and it actually changes the state from locked to locked. Um, but it's not a state change, it's just a momentary press. Um, so because of that, you don't have access to the actual entity to do it. But if you do go up into your automations tab here, you do have the option to do when the button is double clicked, pressed off, turned on, long press, and stuff like that. So you do have access to do automations with this button now that it's in here. Um, and so we have the remote button double press here. We have the short press and the long press. So that's a quick press like that. You can do a double press or you can do a long press. So that gives you three automations you can use this button for. Um, and so you can place this somewhere and use it to turn on and off lights. You could use it to lock your doors. Um, you could do anything you want with it now that it's in Home Assistant using an automation. But that's basically all we need to do to add Zigbee to our Home Assistant. And going forward, we can continue to add more Zigbee devices just like this. Um, every device is going to be a little bit different, but if you follow their setup manuals, you'll, you should be good to go. Um, but as a quick recap, to add a new device to your home assistant, you just go to your devices, you find your Zigbee coordinator, and you click add device via this device. And just like that, you'll have access to it in home assistant. And that's going to be it for this video. Um, I know it was quick and to the point, but hopefully that's a good thing. Um, if you like this video, hit that like button. I would really appreciate it. Thanks to everybody that has subscribed to this channel and keeps watching the videos. I really do appreciate it. I do plan to have another video out this week. Um, hopefully it'll be about the Wisecam version 3. I am excited to get this out of the box and testing it. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely stick around. If you do have any comments, feedback, or concerns about the video, definitely leave them down in the comments down below. Um, if you have any questions about the Zigbee integration, also let me know. I put in some time to get this working the way I wanted it to work. Um, so I might be able to answer your question if you have them. As always guys, thanks so much for giving me your time and I'll see you in the next video.